It is Open Access Week here at the University of Antwerp 2020 and as part of this process I'm going to have a conversation about open science and open access with my colleague Hannah Lesen. Hi, hello everyone. I'm a PhD student at the Receptor Biology Lab um, where I'm investigating uh, cheap PCRs to, make, to use them for better drug therapies. So what is open science to me? Well, I think the most important thing is to get uh, the science out to the public. So really communicate with the general public that don't know anything uh, about science, uh, why we are doing this re research and what we'll get out of it. And there are a lot of initiatives already for it. Uh, the first thing is Mind of Science, uh, which is happening in a lot of countries. It's uh, one week talking about science to the general public in a really informal setting. So just you go to the bar, to a pub, you get a drink and you can uh, start talking about science with us. Um, a next initiative is the Press to Speak, where young scientists just like myself can uh, describe their research through a presentation also for general public with no background in science. And then you also have uh, initiatives like the Universiteit van Vlaanderen, where a lot of professors can um, talk about their research and why we are doing this. And lastly, the Kinderuniversiteit. Uh, the Kinderuniversiteit is uh, really aiming for children from a young age already to get them involved in science, uh, why we are doing this, what of, what's the fun part about it, and what can we get out of it. So to really get them enthusiastic about science and research in general. Open science to me has quite an interesting new meaning in the fact that I'm interested in using machine learning processes to help scientists get new insights from the huge depth of data that is there, present, stored in databases, but not readily accessible and not readable. So for instance, NCBI, which hosts one of the biggest biomedical resources, PubMed, is, is queried about three million times by people all over the world every day. Machines query the same database over six million times a day. So the majority of papers being read today are read by learning machines. So the interesting thing for us is to expand the capacity for machines to help us find new aspects of biomedical information, potentially find new causes of disease. And like in our lab, what we're really trying to look for is new therapeutics that could potentially control those new and novel causes of disease that we find out using these machine learning processes. So actually it's not just getting science out to more people, it's allowing us to do better science as well. To find out new connections and new correlations in really the database is way too big for humans to read these days. We have written programs in our lab that can read 26 million papers in less than a second. And we need to sort of try and work with that process to allow us to work with the machines to get more extracted, good quality information. We're actually uh, falling away underneath the, su the tsunami of digital data in the world these days. And more access and greater uh, availability of data sets and publications to more people will probably in the future help us to develop better medicines and treat more diseases. So it's got a real impact in people's healthcare in the future.